Welcome back. And what we're going to look at today is how to build an electric motor. And then all you do is just put your drink down on the bar and you leave it alone. I'm not sure you expected that to happen and neither did I. So let's try and explain what's happening. Electric fields apply forces to charges. Why does putting two transparent things on top of each other do something so strange when you turn it through 90 degrees? Well, you'll notice that Laika the space dog is not with us again today. She's off on another one of her world travelling missions and more of that at the end. We're having a bit of a Harry Potter time at school at the moment, so I thought I'd join in by wearing the tie. Well, I'm sure you'll find plenty of videos on YouTube that show people how to make motors and of course some very simple motors too. But I want to take you back to my youth and the days of doing O-Level. A lot of schools have bits of apparatus like this lying around and I think some people don't even know what it is. And it's a motor kit called the Westminster kit. I've completely failed to find out why it's called the Westminster kit. I wonder whether Westminster School um, suggested it originally or something like that. But these have been around um, well, since my youth uh, and probably for quite a bit longer. And pupils in O-level times used to have to build a motor and demonstrate it working. And when I first started teaching, and that was GCSE, one of the required practicals was actually building a motor and you had to go around each pupil and mark how well they would built it. Well, it explains really well how a motor works, but my gosh, they're fiddly to build. So let's see if we can get one built and if we can get it to work. So the joy of the Westminster kit is the fact that you can see all the bits of a DC motor broken up and you can put one together. So I've got um, a little wooden rotor here and it's got a metal bar through the middle um, which is hollow and that's going to hold um, the axle which will allow the rotor to spin. Um, these used to get a bit bent sometimes and they wouldn't spin very well. Um, because this um, holder here is metal you have to wrap a bit of sellotape around one end and you'll see why in a minute. So let's build ourselves the rotor. Well as you know with a motor, a rotor is a coil of wire or multiple coils of wire that make an electromagnet. So um, I've bared the um, wire at one end and I'm going to put it here. Um, and this is not really meant to be a, a how-to video. It's just a case of um, how a Westminster kit was originally put together. Um, there are, I'm sure there are other videos that show you people winding the uh, rotor coil. So I'm going to wind around here for a bit and when I get to the end I'll show you the coil that I've made. So after a bit of fiddling about I've made my rotor coil and um, the thing you need to notice is the wire goes round and round and round and you've got a bare end at this side and the other end is a bare end at that side. Um, we used to put a little silicon rubber band around there but I can't actually find the uh, the rubber hose that we used to use to make those rubber bands um, but there's a little trick you can just pass the ends under the coil and they stay where they are anyway so now what we've got to do is put this on a little stand so we can get it uh, in a position where it's ready to rotate so now to put the uh, rotor on its stand so uh, I've got a piece of wood here and it's really clever how they did it they got two split pins so I'll put one in here, there we go, and it was quite tight this piece of wood so it's probably not been used very much, and another split pin there, and that's going to act as our rotor bearings. There's our rotor, we'll pass uh, the rod through the centre of the rotor, and out through the other split pin, there we go, and now we've got a fairly friction free uh, rotating rotor. So we now need the rest of the bits of the motor to get it to work. 
So it gets trickier now, and you might have seen my video on how a DC motor works. So it might be a good idea to have a look at that, because I'm not going to do a great deal of explanation today about how this works. I just wanted to show you the lovely Westminster kit. So we've got an electromagnet, or we will have when we pass electricity through it. Uh, and that's the tricky bit. And this is the bit where students really, really got stuck. I've got a DC power supply, so I'm going to connect two wires to the positive and the negative of the power supply. So that's the positive one in. And here's the negative one. And we're going to attach these to the rotor. But some of you know that if we attach them directly to the rotor, um, they twist as the rotor turned around. And this is a DC motor. So what we've got to do is we've got to connect into the rotor and we've got to have these loosely touching um, the ends of the rotor coil so they connect and disconnect and connect and disconnect. Firstly, so they don't twist. And secondly, so they force the wire downwards to begin with and then upwards on the other side and then downwards again and cause rotation. And to do that, we have to create brushes on this side of the motor that touch onto the ends of the rotor coil. And that is as fiddly as anything. So I'm going to have a go at doing that now. So I put one brush on. Uh, I'm going to try for the second one now. So what you do is you wrap the wire around one of these little aluminium rivets. And you're left with, hopefully, the wire rigidly held there uh, if the rivets are tight. And there we go. We've got two brushes. And the technique is to get these to spring inwards so they constantly touch the bare ends of the rotor coil. Right, I've got my brushes in place. Here's the rotor. So I'm going to put the rotor back on its little bearings and stand. And the technique, oh, I nearly forgot to do it there, was to lift the end of the motor up like that, pass the rod through the middle, and on a good day, we'll see in a minute, what I've got is two springy brushes touching uh, the end of the bare coil ends there, and we'll see if those will connect up and the motor will start. Now, the more observant amongst you will notice there's not a hope that this will start when we turn on the electricity because we haven't got the external magnetic field. So I've got something to hold the magnets into a horseshoe shape. So there's the first one and here's the second one. And I'm being really careful to make sure that the uh, north and south poles are facing each other. So there's a magnetic field across the gap. Shove the little motor inside. I'm just going to check that it freely rotates. And here's the moment of truth. Shall we turn on the current and see if it works? Okay, fingers crossed. I'm pretty confident with my building. Uh, so let's see if the thing works. So I'll turn on the power supply, turn up the current, and give it a little flick. Oh, quite a high current there. So um, give it another flick. And it's working um, rather nicely. So I think I would pass my uh, GCSE Assess Practical from all those years ago. So I do hope you enjoyed that video and you enjoyed seeing the old fashioned Westminster motor kit. Anyway, I'll be making another video next time and I look forward to seeing you then.